Hey everyone, it's James. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. Rob is joining me today. Big shout out to all the new subscribers on the channel. Thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button and for new people to the channel, please hit that like, hit the subscribe and hit that bell, ding, 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 so you get a notification anytime a new video drops. Sometimes we do the quickies and sometimes we have full length conversations like we are going to today. And joining me today is Rob McDonald. Rob, thanks for coming on. Glad to be here. And I got to say, uh, really smart people click the bell. So don't be a really smart person and click that bell. Now that you've insulted everybody. I, 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 <laughs> I, I never said. <laughs> I just said that there's really smart people and there's slightly less the smart people. people. The people that don't <laughs> click the bell. Anyway, thanks <laughs> so much for joining along. We are talking once again the Batman and specifically the sins of the father, Bruce. Wayne. The sins of the father are a big part of this movie. Obviously, we go in from, you know, the mystery that is unraveling with the Riddler, but then there is the mystery within the mystery that Falcone uh, brings out saying one truth about Thomas Wayne, and then Alfred gives Bruce Wayne another truth about Thomas Wayne. So we have two truths. It's a Rashomon. It's the last Jedi scene, and the Batman is happening. We don't know what to believe because Bruce Wayne is hearing things for the first time. He's learning new information about his father. Rob, I'm going to send it to you. Why don't you set the scene a little bit? You've seen this movie 776 times. You actually are Matt Reeves. 77. Sorry, sorry, 77 now. Why don't you set the stage about what uh, Falcone and, and, um, and Alfred say about the father, and then we could talk about how we interpret it and what we actually believe is the real truth because somewhere in the middle lies the facts yes and uh yeah i, I, gotta, I gotta give you kudos first james for uh throwing in an akura kurosawa reference with uh rashman i don't think we nearly have enough of those uh, on, <laughs> on, on these uh, shows in general so uh kudos to Kira kurosawa for a great career and some great movies but anyway uh, about the actual uh framework of this itself yeah we did have like you know uh Bruce seemingly finding out the truth from Falcone while uh, Alfred was unconscious on a, on his possible deathbed. That was as far as far as uh, Bruce knew, and uh, that's when he told him, "It's like, oh, uh, Maroni uh, set up set up his uh, uh, his father's and uh, his parents' death in general." But then when he goes to Alfred later on, that's when Alfred kind of says, "It's like, no, you, he your father wasn't working with Maroni." As soon as he found out what he did to him, uh, that's when he wanted to go to the um, the press and then leak everything about it. And then that's when Alfred said that he believes that, in fact, Marone, uh, sorry, that in fact Falcone was uh, responsible for their death. However, he also brings up the third option uh, where he's just like, oh, maybe it was someone random. Maybe it was uh, uh, Falcone. So we kind of we kind of have these three truths. And, and, and uh, throughout the movie, he just... He literally only had Alfred's word because before he could try to even get like a definitive answer after speaking to Alfred from Falcone, I mean, Falcone dead, he gone. And uh, gone, yeah, yeah no, no, so no real way for him to actually get a definitive answer by the end of this movie. So yeah, I think those are really the three options that we got and they presented in this movie as to uh, who, who could have actually killed the Waynes. And if I just point blank right now said to you, what do you believe happened to Thomas Wayne? What is the truth behind Thomas Wayne? What would you say? So for me, when I'm like thinking about it, I do like number one, that they didn't definitively answer. Like that's, that's the one cool part, uh, that at least within the framework of this movie, they didn't answer, but uh, just analyzing the movie itself I really don't think Maroni was responsible. Like I, I, I hold that as like a very small percentage, probably like less than like a, less than a percent as the chance that he actually did it. Because I think that knowing what happened to Maroni and how he got pushed out of power and Falcone kind of like, you know, took everything and, and, and the rest of the Gotham's corrupt uh, uh, world took over uh, Maroni's empire. I really don't think it was him that was responsible for it all. Um, so then at the end, it's like, is it someone random? Is it, was it Falcone? I mean, Alfred really does like, you know, uh, give you a real reason why Falcone would want him dead. 
right? And considering that he he was someone in uh, fairly big control over there, he could have literally had anybody just do the act for him. Right now, I think that's the most likely, but I do like that they left the door open that it could have just been somebody random. Like knowing how calculated Falcone probably even was at that point, you know, um, what, what was the exact number? I guess it would have been about 20 years, years beforehand, right? Because I think Batman's, Bruce Wayne Batman's supposed to be 30 in this, right? So roughly 20 years before, before Falcone, you know, really had all the power still at the same time, it seemed like he had a ton of power and he had, he had a lot of uh, options for that. He could have uh, had people kill him. So I, I, I kind of rate it like that. I think it's most likely Falcone, but I like that the, the door is open for it just being someone random. I like the idea that Bruce thinks <clears throat> that it was Falcone, but it was, um, because of what Alfred said, and we're going to get into what Alfred said in a little bit, because also, is that even true, what Alfred said? Because Falcone does say something towards the end where he says that the, that the truth will die with him. He's the only one that knew, and it will die with him, which, to your point, begs that if Maroney knew, Maroney's still alive in this. He's in prison. He's behind bars. So if he is alive, why wouldn't he know the truth? But what if there is a middle ground here? What if there is some kind of gray area truth where Falcone used his manipulation tactics and skill rob and got Maroney to do the hit on the Waynes. What if so it, so what Falcone is saying is actually true and what Alfred is saying is moderately true, but Falcone convinced Maroney to get to the Waynes and not blatantly like you need to go kill the Waynes, but he kind of planted a seed in there and tricked Maroney into doing it. That way Falcone could always have something over Maroney and over Thomas Wayne. Yeah, that's an interesting part. But then, like like you said, it's like Maroney's still alive, so he'd be able to confirm or deny like that part of it, right? And and if this 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 thought process is already like available to them, like there's no reason why Bruce Wayne people knew that Bruce Wayne went to the club that day, right, to go confront Fal Falcone after after it was right. Like it wasn't really he wasn't really hiding anything. He showed up as Bruce Wayne. People knew it was Bruce Wayne showing up over there. So. If he had that conversation with him, there's no reason why, for example, in the next movie or in something, that he could go visit Maroney and try to get the full truth that way. So that's the only thing that would make me think that it's like uh, Maroney probably didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, because if he did, then there could be a confirmation as to if it was him, then it could be like, oh, what, what, what do you mean, Falcone, with your dying breath, you know, saying that the, the uh, truth dies with you because Maroney could literally confirm or deny it, right? But at the same, I guess at the same time, he'd be incriminating himself if he did say that he did it, right? And, and maybe he just wouldn't talk. He's not a rat like Falcone. Falcone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, I, he, he, that, that's where it's like, I, I don't think it was a rat thing that he was doing. I literally think he was kind of like manipulating and, you know, tr trying to get back at, at, at the Waynes in an, uh, in an additional way. Um, by by just saying that to Bruce and you know being so like you know callous with him, I don't think I don't think he was. Uh, I, I I think that's what his game was, and it wasn't him him being a rat in any type of way. It was just you know he's he's playing with his mind. He's playing with Bruce's mind. I agree. I think in that moment he was playing with Bruce's mind. I think he does know the truth, and I, I was more inclined to believe that that he killed. He was responsible for the killing of of the parents i like the idea of it being a nobody but i think i know everybody hates when things are connected too tightly but sometimes you have to for the better of the plot for the better of the overall story sometimes things have to connect like 89 batman it works better if it's jack napier killing his parents just for that one story right maybe not always in the comics but in that story it definitely worked in batman returns it made no difference to the plot but in the first batman it, it made a difference and sometimes you know, so i like that but i like you know that he's, he blamed it on Maroney, which made complete sense. It was completely – like if you were Bruce Wayne, you would totally believe that that story. Mm -hmm. But then when Alfred comes around and he turns it around, he says, no, no, it was Falcone because – and this is – I want to get into this with you now, Rob. It's what Alfred says to Bruce Wayne about Thomas Wayne because Thomas Wayne at this point we're thinking is a corrupt individual, a corrupt – like every politician, a corrupt politician. He had – you know, he had things done that were not ethical. He had them followed through by Falcone, a known mobster. And now, you know, what what Alfred is saying is he's the whis is he was going to be like a whistleblower and tell him to stop doing it. He didn't want to do it and he was going to come clean on it. And based on that, Falcone 
had him whacked, according to Alfred. Yeah, well, and, and I think that's a part where Alfred could have easily known that part of the truth. Because in a scenario where Bruce would have found out, like, you know, what happened to uh, the, the reporter Elliot um, and, and literally reacted to it in the moment where it's just like, hey, I never wanted this. I never wanted anybody to get killed. And Alfred could have very well been there to, to full, fully see that part firsthand. So I think that's a part where, like, Alfred likely knew what 100% that it's like this is the way your father reacted. He never wanted anybody to die. And as soon as, uh, you know, he wanted to protect Martha, he wanted to protect his wife from being exposed to anything that he wanted, he, he wanted uh, to protect her name. Right. And uh, I, I, I believe that part hundred percent. And then when, so when he finds out that someone's been killed as a result of what he, what he went to Falcone over, like, that's when it's like, okay, this, this, protecting your mother is one thing, but getting somebody killed is a completely another. So that's where I would fully believe Alfred, because I think that he would have been there. He would have been there to, to likely ex experience uh, Bruce uh, Thomas's reaction to what happened. So that's one part that I don't think it's speculation. Alfred's point. I think that's probably firsthand knowledge uh, as to that's how your father re at least reacted. Whether there's more more to uncover from that, maybe um, he had more than one corrupt dealing that Alfred had no idea about. That's something that you know I, I think Andrew would be very much happy with, and that we we, we go into more possible uh, issues with the Waynes. But as of right now, I think that's what the movie was trying to make us think was going on. So you think pretty much all of what Alfred said was fact. Uh, except for the stuff that he didn't personally experience, right? So that's where it's just like he thinks it's Mar uh, Falcone, but it's like uh, it could have been someone random. But I do think at the same time, yeah, if we're answering the question, I think the movie is trying to tell us that Falcone did it, but leaving the door open for it being anybody. And the fact that uh, Falcone <clears throat> died and he said the secret died with him, that it's le literally leaving the the door uh closed as in we won't know who actually did it but i think based off the movie we are expected to think that it's falco falcone but we will never really know and as opposed to everything else Alfred said said yeah i think i think it was likely firsthand uh knowledge like he he witnessed uh, uh thomas reacting um live in person. i thought the way they did they left it open-ended i thought they did a really good job of that also i gotta say because it could have felt, uh, it could have felt un unresolved, but it, I felt complete. I felt like that part of the story was complete. I compared it to the Amazing Spider-Man series, where I love those movies. You know, I am an advocate of the Amazing Spider-Man. But I always felt like the parent storyline they 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 just never got there, right? And I guess they were hoping for a third movie, but you can't always do that. This one, you could expand on what they were saying in a sequel and the third one and the fourth one, whatever. But what we got is enough for me to be like, I'm content. That's good. We can move on with the knowledge that we have. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and bringing in uh, The Amazing Spider-Man is actually a really good comparison because also, like, I, I, I agree. Like, you know, even though I, I you know, I know you love Amazing Spider-Man 2 a lot like that. And I like it, I think, more than most. But it's like that's like a definite like like weak part of the movie like them them trying to unveil this whole like you know uh thing with the with the parkers and his parents and all that stuff that was always like a weaker part of it where i thought that they if they just like left that stuff out like you know just leave it be uh i i probably would have been happier yeah no definitely i think <clears throat> the one thing too is with all the moroni talk maybe he does confront moroni because you gotta think there's a Good possibility that Maroni is going to play a larger part. Mm -hmm. I mean, I shouldn't say a larger part, but be a more of a have more of a presence in a sequel, especially when you look at the character's connection to Harvey Dent going forward, and the connection that he would have, he could have to a Harvey Dent because Harvey Dent, the, the two faces twins, his gooey twins are the ones at the door at the Iceberg Lounge. So there's connections everywhere for Harvey Dent to become Two Face at some point going forward, and Maroni being mentioned, being a part of it and even being blamed could play into some aspect of this because maybe maybe Bruce Wayne decides, you know, it wasn't Falcone, it was Maroney. Maybe something comes up and he tries to drive that further down. I, I, I'm just speculating, obviously, but that could be a fun plot to go down. 
uh, that that route also because by the way, Batman Forever did a great job of showing how Harvey Dent was transformed into Two Face in that courtroom scene. <laughs> that, Paper. That, that, man, that Manila envelope it really protected him. <laughs> it does. It does a really good. Job. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I uh, I gotta wear those like as bulletproof vests sometimes, just in case. Like I'm a, I'm in a rough neighborhood, just put a Manila envelope like underneath. Always, your shirt. always bring a Manila envelope with you i love this though we're going to get the arkham asylum tv show i don't mm -hmm. know if they're going to die delve into any any of this stuff in that show i kind of hope they don't leave it for there but i thought just that mystery the thomas wayne mystery of what act what he actually was up to how it, it, who was telling the truth, Alfred or Falcone? You always want to believe Alfred, and Alfred's story is so much more believable. Obviously, Bruce Wayne believes that story in it, but that could also be the false story because there's also a part of me when I watch it that, I mean, I, I tend to agree with that one more than the Falcone one, obviously, because they're two different people and one has values, but the one's a rat. But the one thing, though, Rob, is in that moment, Alfred needs to, A, gain Bruce Wayne's trust, and he needs to, Bruce Wayne to believe in his parents again because his parents are deceased, right? They can't change anything about the past, and neither can Alfred. But and he doesn't want to see Bruce, you know, go further down into this rabbit hole of darkness that he's in. So he tells him this story about how his dad made a mistake because you can't ignore that. But he made a mistake, and he tried to correct that mistake. And in trying to correct that mistake, a mobster of all people had him killed. So maybe there is a lie there, and maybe Falcone was telling the truth. It's certainly possible. I mean, like just looking and I uh, look at this Alfred, this version of Alfred in general, right? Like they're literally making us believe, even though they haven't said definitively what Alfred's background is. This is the Alfred that has military background. I'm, I think it's fairly confident to say that this Alfred uh, was highly trained, likely uh, in the British military in that version of, of the story uh, and um, involved like you know, when you're in the military and, and stuff like that, there is possible that you might be a prisoner of, prisoner of war in some type of way, right? And what's a good big part about that? Not revealing information. So the fact that that this Alfred probably has that background makes it possible that he could be lying. I guess he, it could be lying. It's not like he's you know the Michael Goff uh, Alfred from uh, exactly. from from Keaton. He's not. Um, I forget the actor that plays. Uh, plays plays alfred in the 60s television show he's not that version right like it's like those alfreds literally seem very trustworthy and even michael kane to a certain extent yeah he had to tell a certain right white, white lie about rachel and stuff like that lie to bruce a little bit but uh it, it doesn't seem like he he's uh he's completely um untrustworthy either it's just yeah th there could be a truth that he's hiding I think it's more likely myself, though, that 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 he might have been lied to as well. And there might be some lies um, that were told to Alfred or, or you know, maybe uh, maybe Thomas knew a lot more and he was he was involved in a lot more than uh, Alfred even knows. Yeah. And, and maybe, you know, and I mean, you'd also think with his background is a little bit it's dabbled in a little bit more in that prequel novel. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe with his background, maybe he learned the actual truth about Thomas Wayne, and maybe it was exactly what he believed, or maybe it was the complete opposite. It wasn't so much that, but I, it's it's just it's great that this is such you know this isn't the part of the movie that I thought we would be talking about uh, a couple of weeks out, you know. But <laughs> I think I think it's just fascinating to think about well, what actually happened with Thomas Wayne because the events of Thomas Wayne's like the Thomas Wayne's campaign is what sparks this entire movie. Is that campaign in Wayne Manor Orphanage, that's what sparks the entire event of the movie. That's what gets Riddler up and going when he's a toddler. And that's what gets <clears throat> him and his involvement with Falcone and Maroni and 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 all and you know the dealings with the press and all that. And then Martha Arkham, the Arkham side of the family come into light. Like mm -hmm. this it's a massive piece of the Batman puzzle. And uh, it was bigger. It had a bigger influence on the events of the film than I anticipated going into it. 
Yeah, no, it did. And, uh, you know, there was the reveal the truth part. And you now I, mean, I probably wasn't the only one, but I actually thought that, you know, the reveal the truth part was, you know, the unfortunate uh, thing that a lot of movies seem to be doing nowadays where they make the villain related to the hero in some type of way. And I was really worried that I, that he was going to turn out to be a Wayne. And that was the revealing of the truth. It's and, so funny because, sorry, Rob, but it's so funny because I've heard a lot of people say that. And I was like, I, that, I, that never occurred to me. No. No, no, and then when no, you read the prequel novel, it's definitely not a thing, but it never occurred to me. Unless it, they might pull that in the sequel. No, but it never occurred to me. Never, no, I don't think so. I, 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 I think if that was a thing, then they would have been revealed in this. I don't think that there's going to be a case where it's no. like, now Riddler, after having this whole you know, plan and and revelation of it all, like that that um, uh, that now all of a sudden he's going to turn out being a Wayne. Like, I think if that reveal was going to happen, then it would happen here. And I mean, like, even something like Joker, Joker played with that part as well, right? That, that he could have been um, um, uh, uh, Bruce Wayne's uh, brother. Like, he was, that was a part of the part of the thing that the lie that he was told from his mom. And uh, yeah, they played with that and they didn't pull the trigger. Not like, you know, something like Spectre did and some other projects that I won't even mention uh, did. And Spectre, of course, I'm referring to James Bond, where it's like, oh, Blofeld is kind of, you know, uh, James Bond's brother. And I'm just like, uh, I, I really did not need that. But uh, I want to touch back on something else that you mentioned about Maroney and that fact, where it's like, Maroney will come back in some type of way, I'm sure. Like, whether it's, uh, you know, maybe not in Arkham, but he could come back in something like Penguin uh, in some type of way. Because we're literally, I think the only sh sh visual that we had of him was him walking in those uh, handcuffs on the, on the TV screen. And that, that was, like, literally considering he had a part to play in this movie in general, the fact that they never showed him, I think is a little bit, like, you know, uh, foreshadowing possibly for the, for the future. And about, you know, revealing some more stuff about uh, Maroney possibly as well. And then, you know, the fact that, you know, I don't know the actor that played him in the head uh, in, in the handcuffs and on the TV screen, but it gives them either way opportunity to recast him and and find a proper actor that they that they want to play off of, uh, whether it's scenes with Colin Farrell's um, Penguin or whether it's in scenes with uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman or Bruce Wayne. So I, I, I do think that there's there's more to be seen from uh, uh, Salvatore Mar Maroni. I'm looking at uh, who played him in the Batman, but I can't. Oh, oh shoot. I can't find him. <clears throat> oh, again, yeah, he was just favorite. in a he would have just been in that one shot, I believe. And I, and they never even, never even said that that could have definitely been in shot, but you know, knowing how, like, you know, both you and I know how news works and they typically go to B roll whenever they're mentioning somebody and usually makes you think that that's supposed yeah. to be him, Right. So, um, yeah. Who actually played him? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. They, here, yeah. Obviously it was Eric Roberts in the dark Knight. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Unforgettable, unbeatable. I, I, I hope they, well, I don't know what they're going to do with the sequel, but I would like to see more of Maroney because now uh, Maroney, you know, might even play actually Rob into the Penguin TV series. Yeah, yeah, then that's what I was that's what I was thinking that yeah, he could yeah. he could factor in there and could be involved in, you know, uh Penguin's Penguin's power play for power, you know, like uh, exactly. in the underworld don't, of uh Gotham, yeah. Don't forget Maroney's more of a big shot I and mean, he's been put behind bars a, a bunch of times mm -hmm. because and, and unknowingly, but now he knows it was because of the rat Falcone. Like that's why. So that that could be a big part, and he might want his his land back, and then that could be penguin. What if, maybe Harvey Dent turns into Two Face in the Penguin show? I mean, that would be kind of cool to see because of the Maroney power play. This penguin versus uh, you know, whatever uh version of Two Face uh Matt Reeves wants to give me, I'd I would i would watch that like uh like a uh, big versus uh, standoff be between those two, like uh, throughout the series, would be pretty great. It'd be a, a lot, a lot of fun. But let's wrap it up, Rob, because we haven't figured out the truth about Thomas Wayne. We're gonna have to get Matt Reeves on here with a lie detector test to figure out what the actual truth about Thomas Wayne was. But we know one thing, and I think this was a good thing, and that is the corruption of Gotham. Even got to the whitest of nights. That was Thomas Wayne, one of the you know the nice billionaire playboy guy, Thomas Wayne and his wife. The the darkness, the corruption of Gotham, got to him and made him turn to the dark side. And I think that is something that obviously, like I said, it influenced the movie. And I think it was a, a proper plot device. 
Absolutely. And I think there's uh, still, you know, whether there's more to uh, un- unpack with Thomas Wayne, I definitely think there's a lot more to unpack with Martha Wayne at the very least, because Can't they, set, wait, they set up a lot. <laughs> yeah, some stuff's going on. Uh, but anyway, that'll do it for the show. What do you guys think is the actual truth about Thomas Wayne? Uh, do you know or do you care? Let us know in the comments below. Rob, where can everybody find you at? You can find me at Robert E. McDonald on both uh, Twitter and Instagram. And, uh, yeah, if you want to follow me on uh, uh, Letterboxd, you can always find me there uh, at uh, Nightwing with a 6 instead of a G. Nightwing 6 instead of a G. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Once again, give us a like, give us a subscribe, share the video all you want. Share, 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 share. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.